Hello everyone, this is Amin Msiddi. Welcome to this presentation about vacant urban spaces, focusing on the definitions, challenges and perspectives in urban regeneration. Firstly, an overview on the presentation plan. So, we'll start with the problem definition, then the definition problem passing through theoretical references and classification approach. After that, we'll move to the challenges and perspectives part where we explain the methods and the framework and illustrate all this theoretical approach with the relevant study cases. In the end, we'll finish it up with the key findings and the conclusions. So without further ado, let's get started. So starting with the problem definition. What is the problem? Why is it a problem? And to whom is it a problem? In fact, when we talk about a vacant urban space, the image that pops to our minds is one of an empty, semi-wild, neglected parcel, sometimes full of trash, sometimes lost in illegal activities. Indeed, they begin a negative influence on the community well-being, the surrounding lot's values, and the ecological aspect of the city. On the other hand, this phenomenon is a natural consequence of the dynamics of cities' evolution. And many researchers, landscapers, architects, investors, stakeholders, and even municipalities and governments see in this faculty a starting point for use and city development. Those spaces may help meet the community needs and reach economic growth. For a clear understanding of this phenomenon, we start with the definition. Defining such a complex term is not an easy task, especially when various disciplines are related to this issue. But first, let's start with the basic linguistic decomposition of this term using the famous Oxford English Dictionary for Learners. In a definition, the principal part is the noun part because it holds the nature, the very essence of the defined notion. So, we start with space. As we all know, this word has different usages. According to the context, it can be physical, three-dimensional volume, or two-dimensional uh, area, it can refer to the outer space, and there is also psychological, temporal meaning to it. But we can observe, though, that there is a slight connotation to emptiness, as we see here, which is interesting. Then we move to urban, an adjective which is relatively less complicated, which means relate to the city as opposed to rural, and lately it was used to refer to a certain artistic practices. Vacant, an adjective that is literally embracing the meaning of emptiness. It can be used in a physical meaning or as a mental or psychological state. For a better understanding, we go through professional and academic references starting with American landscape proposal Trantec, who used the terms lost space and urban void, defining it as undesirable urban areas that are in need of redesign, empty space, making no positive contribution to the surroundings or users. They are ill-defined, without measurable boundaries, and fail to connect elements in a coherent way. Throughout his book, Fighting Lost Space, Trantec use such negative vocabulary such as leftovers, unused, unstructured, abandoned, vacated, remnant, residual, deteriorated. So for transic, there are undesirable empty spaces underlining the character of abandonment, neglect and negative input. But still, throughout his book, Finding Lost Space, he didn't forget to mention that they are open to urban redevelopment, to creative refill and potential discovery. Our second reference is a group of researchers from different fields working together on an inventory of vacant urban land in the USA in 2016. And they start to collect various definitions. And the definitions are variable from very broad to less general to more specific. For example, definition of Jacques Baudry, in 1991, a less intensive pattern in land use or managing of the soil such that the soil is left to its own spontaneous dynamics. 
Raymond Northam in 71, talking about remnant parcels with physical limitations, corporate reserve parcels, helpful speculation, or institutional reserve parcel, etc. According to Johnson, talking about a building or a lot that has been vacant for two years or more. Davison and Zolnick in 2004 suggested the idea of lands or buildings that are not actively used for any purpose. So basically, the definitions are valuable according to the perspective of the definer. It goes from the physical manifestation and morphology to the history, the legal situation, and even the economic value. And then we move to the classification approach, and starting with Roger Trensic, the factors that create the urban void can also become the basis for classification, such as planning voids that are created due to the faulty planning process, functional void created due to the leftover space or a built mass that has become defunct, or geographical void created due to the existence of geographical feature or natural disaster. For the group of researchers working on the inventory, they collected different typologies from various sources and the names are honestly quite interesting. We have like dead space, there is zombie property, obsolete abandoned derelict site, draw scapes, but mainly the classification is based on land morphology, if it is bare or vegetative, empty or with architectural structure, with vacant structure or destroyed, the land use, if it's abandoned, unused, or used as a trash dump, temporary use, transitional situation, the land history too, talking about previous function and time of abandonment, and land impact, mentioning health hazards, social discomfort, and environmental abuse. The classification made by Raymond Northam is also interesting, and it will help us for the later part. He has determined five types of vacant urban land, the irregular shaped or small sized leftover parcels, the lots that are physically unfit for development for topographic or natural causes like steep slopes and flood hazards, the corporate reserve parcels for future expansion, the transitional land for speculations, and parcels in institutional reserve for future development. So before we move on to the next part, we should state that multiple definitions are being used trying to determine what is meant by the term vacant urban space. The term is generally defined by the most highlighted character related to every field that try to define. For research purposes, we consider the following definition. A demarcated parcel located in an urban context, empty or slash end containing a vacant structure, can be accessible to the public, yet economically, ecologically and socially passive, in a state of dysfunction, or host and undesired activities. The classification too is not standard, so it's either based on the previous cycle or on the current observations. Now we're moving to the challenges and perspectives. In this part, the objective is the reuse of vacant urban space, so the criteria of classification should go in the same direction that would be open to the idea of space recycling and the perspective of urban regeneration. The key for a new usage of the urban vacant space is its capacity to host new activity, which is conditioned by 1. The natural adaptability, we're talking about the size, the shape, the scale, the structures, the location, the topography and geography, and 2. The set of laws that are administrated. And these two factors, if you can notice, can be detailed and elaborated into the five factors of uh, Raymond Northam. As for the framework, the precedent selection criteria are to be fit to the definition and to be a transformed space already. So the selected cases are the Prince Cecilien Garten in Berlin, the Tempelhof Feld in Berlin, and the Grand Voisin in Paris. And the precedent analysis factor are the natural compatibility and the legal status detailed as follows. The natural compatibility is based on the scale, the shape, the topography and the land cover of the site. 
As for the legal status, it is based on the power relationship between the project manager and the property owner. So it is either full rights if they are the same entity, collaborative rights if they are working together, appropriated rights if they have an agreement, and no site rights if they have no communication and no legal ownership. The first case is the Princess Sealing Garten in Berlin. The site has been a wasteland for over half of a century, and then Nomadisch Grün Association launched this urban garden in the center of the city. And to quote the co-founder of this project, Marco Clausen, they would be a kind of a miniature utopia, a place where a new style of urban living can emerge, when people can work together, relax, communicate, and enjoy locally produced vegetables. So we can say that the site is of a district scale of 0.6 hectares, irregular shaped with a flat topography and paved land cover. As for the legal status, the municipality of Berlin leased the site to Nomadic Green from 2009. So from a power relationship perspective, the association has appropriated site rights. The contract though is renewed annually, but with no guarantee since the municipality kept the possibility of selling the property at any time as closing the contract. And it is important to mention that because of this tricky legal situation, in addition to the paved area, this urban garden is totally transportable, totally mobile. And all the plants are cultivated in mobile pots, easy to remove in case they have to relocate if they lose the site. The second one is the Temple of Feld, which was the former German airport that reopened in 2010 as a recreational area, receiving thousands of visitors. It was considered as the largest city park, hosting different activities such as picnics, sports fields, art exhibitions, fairs, festivals, urban farming, and even assistance for refugees. This park is a city scale. We have like 355 hectares with a regular shape and flat topography and the land cover is mixed having soil vegetation pavement with urban furniture and built structure for the legal status it is a full site right situation since the municipality of Berlin is the one owning the site and managing the park and finally the last example is Le Grand Voisin in Paris, France and the idea started when our association took the opportunity to use the vacancy in the premises of Saint-Vincent de Paul Hospital for accommodating disadvantaged people. And this was during the transitional phase of relocating the departments of the hospital before closing it. Later on, other structures joined the initiative of reusing the vacant building and the outdoor land of the former hospital. It is now a participative hub for youth, artists, urban farmers, shops, restaurants, and associations. It is a flat, rectangular, district-scale site containing soil and vegetation, paved areas, urban furniture, and specially buildings. For the legal status, it started as collaborative rights relationship, thanks to the trust built between the direction of the hospital and the association based on previous collaboration. From 2014, the overall management of the site is transferred to an association, signing a contract with Paris municipality and the administration of the hospitals of Paris. And thus, it became a case of appropriate site rights. Now we jump to the findings and conclusions. So this is the results for the Princess Ceiling Garden in Berlin. So we have the district scale, in a regular shape, flat topography, a paved land cover, and an appropriated right as a power relationship. For the Doppelhofer Feld, we have a city scale, an irregular shape, a flat topography, a mixed land cover, and full right power relationship. And for Les Grands Voisins, it's a district scale, a regular shape, Flat topography, a mixed land cover, and the power relationship goes from collaborative rights 
appropriated rights. And this is a general overview of the results of the precedent analysis, showing that the natural compatibility is kind of manageable if the legal status is fine, and then the power relationship is important to help raise any project in a vacant land. And for the conclusion, we can say that in the process of establishing the role of the vacant urban spaces as a sustainable way of urban regeneration, the definition helped set a categorization for these spaces. The vacant urban space got rid finally of the earlier negative connotation, being a blank canvas ready to redress the urban balance, those spaces are considered as an adaptive tool to meet the emerging needs to the community and reach economic growth. As we saw, a successful transformation would have a huge impact on the urban landscape resilience, the community well-being and lifestyle, and it may also generate economic development, aesthetic value, and ecological improvement. In the end, let me share with you this inspiring image symbolically related to the topic. Thank you for your time.